A blessed day, learners. Be ready and prepare yourselves as we embark on a journey of learning and enjoyment in this video. This time, we will be studying the 10 items of physical science through the letter of you are set 5b. Stay safe, and may God bless you always. Welcome to the Teacher Lumaban YouTube channel. Commit your way to the Lord, trust also in Him, and He shall bring it to pass. Psalm 37 verse 5 Which material is the usual component of an anode? A. Aluminum B. Carbon C. Copper D. Nickel In the next 5 seconds, Select the best response from the available options. 5 4 3 2 1 The usual component of an anode depends on the specific type of device or application being referred to. However, in many common applications, such as in dry cell batteries, like the ones used in everyday batteries, the typical material used for the anode is b carbon explanation in a standard zinc carbon battery a common type of dry cell battery the anode is generally made of zinc and the cathode is a mixture of manganese dioxide and carbon usually in the form of graphite however in other types of batteries such as lithium-ion batteries the anode is typically made of materials like graphite a form of carbon Thus, the most commonly used material for anodes in a broad range of applications is carbon. A metal spoon is placed in a cup filled with hot coffee. After some time, the exposed end of the spoon becomes hot even without direct contact with the liquid. What explains this phenomenon? A. Conduction b convection c radiation d thermal expansion in the next five seconds select the best response from the available options five four three two one the phenomenon where the exposed end of the metal spoon becomes hot after being placed in a cup of hot coffee is explained by a Conduction Explanation Conduction is the process of heat transfer through a material without the material itself moving. In this case, the metal spoon conducts heat from the hot coffee through the spoon's material to the exposed end. Metal is a good conductor of heat, so the thermal energy from the hot coffee travels along the spoon, causing the end not in contact with the coffee to become hot. This process does not involve the movement of the liquid, which would be convection, or electromagnetic waves, which would be radiation, and it is not related to the expansion of the material, thermal expansion. Which causes the warmth that you feel when you place your finger at the side of the flame of a burning candle? A. Conduction b. Convection c. Radiation d. Not enough information given In the next 5 seconds, select the best response from the available options. 5 4 3 2 1 The warmth you feel when you place your finger at the side of the flame of a burning candle is primarily due to radiation. Here's a breakdown of the mechanisms involved and why radiation is the correct answer. Radiation, heat from the flame is emitted in the form of infrared radiation. This thermal radiation travels through the air and reaches your finger, causing the sensation of warmth. Convection, while convection does play a role in the overall heat distribution around a flame, as hot air rises and cooler air moves in to take its place, it primarily affects the air above the flame rather than to the side where you place your finger. 
conduction, this mechanism involves the transfer of heat through direct contact with a solid or liquid medium. Since you are not directly touching the flame or the candle, conduction is not the primary cause of the warmth felt at the side of the flame. Not enough information given, this option is incorrect because the scenario described provides sufficient information to deduce that radiation is the primary cause of the warmth. Thus, the correct answer is C. Radiation Which process of heat transfer occurs through the movement of mass from one place to another? A. Conduction B. Convection C. Induction D. Radiation In the next 5 seconds, select the best response from the available options. 5 4 3 2 1 the process of heat transfer that occurs through the movement of mass from one place to another is b convection explanation convection involves the transfer of heat by the physical movement of fluid which can be either liquid or gas when a fluid is heated it becomes less dense and rises while cooler denser fluid sinks this creates a circulation pattern that transfers heat this process is common in atmospheric and oceanic phenomena, as well as in heating systems and boiling water. When work is done by a system, what happens to its temperature, assuming that no heat is added to it? A. Decreases. B. Increases. C. Remains the same. D none of these. In the next 5 seconds, select the best response from the available options. 5 4 3 2 1 When work is done by a system and no heat is added to it, the system's internal energy decreases. According to the first law of thermodynamics, the change in internal energy, delta U, of a system is given by delta U equals QW where Q is the heat added to the system and W is the work done by the system in this scenario since no heat is added Q equals zero the equation simplifies to delta U equals W since work is being done by the system W is positive and thus delta U is negative indicating a decrease in internal energy. The internal energy of a system is directly related to its temperature. Therefore, when the internal energy decreases, the temperature of the system also decreases. The correct answer is A. Decreases which states that when two systems are in thermal equilibrium with a third system, they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. A. Zeroth law of thermodynamics. B. First law of thermodynamics. C. Second law of thermodynamics. D. Mechanical equivalent of heat. In the next five seconds, select the best response from the available options. Five. 4, 3, 2, 1. The statement when two systems are in thermal equilibrium with a third system, they are in thermal equilibrium with each other is a principle of the Zeroth law of thermodynamics. So the correct answer is A. Zeroth law of thermodynamics. Explanation the Zeroth law of thermodynamics establishes the concept of temperature and thermal equilibrium. It states that if two systems are each in thermal equilibrium with a third system, then they are in thermal equilibrium with each other. This law is fundamental in defining temperature and ensuring that temperature is a consistent and transitive property for thermal systems. What happens during an adiabatic process? A. 
no heat enters or leaves the system. b. The pressure of the system remains constant. c. The temperature of the system remains constant. d. The system does no work nor work is done on it. In the next 5 seconds, select the best response from the available options. 5 4 3 2 1 During an adiabatic process, there is no heat transfer into or out of the system. This means that the system is thermally insulated from its surroundings. The correct answer is A. No heat enters or leaves the system. Explanation In an adiabatic process, the key characteristic is that the system does not exchange heat with its surroundings. This can occur when a system is perfectly insulated, or when the process happens so quickly that there is no time for heat transfer. As a result, all changes in the system's internal energy come from work done by or on the system, not from heat exchange. What thermodynamic process occurs in a closed car inside a hot garage? A. Adiabatic B. Isobaric C. Isochoric D. Isothermal In the next 5 seconds, select the best response from the available options. 5 4 3 2 1 in a closed car inside a hot garage, the process that occurs is primarily C. Isochoric Explanation An isochoric process is one where the volume remains constant. In the context of a closed car inside a hot garage, the volume of the air inside the car does not change because the car windows and doors are closed, meaning the air is trapped and cannot expand or contract freely while the temperature inside the car will rise due to the heat from the garage, which implies an increase in the internal energy and pressure of the air inside the car, the volume remains constant. This defines an isochoric process, where any change in temperature leads to a change in pressure but not in volume. Consider thermal energy transfer during a chemical process. When heat is transferred to the system, the process is said to be blank, and the sign of H is blank. A endothermic, positive. B endothermic, negative. C exothermic, positive. D exothermic, negative. In the next 5 seconds, Select the best response from the available options. 5 4 3 2 1 When heat is transferred to the system during a chemical process, the process is said to be endothermic because the system absorbs heat from its surroundings. In such cases, the enthalpy change, delta H, of the system is positive because the system gains energy. Therefore, the correct answer is A. Endothermic, positive Which of the following statements is false? A. Entropy increases with the number of microstates of the system B. Any irreversible process results in an overall increase in entropy See the total entropy of the universe in any spontaneous process. D. The change in entropy in a system depends on the initial and final states of the system and the path taken from one state to the order. In the next 5 seconds, select the best response from the available options. 5 4 3 2 1 Let's analyze each statement to determine which one is false. A. Entropy increases with the number of microstates of the system. This is true. Entropy is a measure of the number of microstates, possible configurations, that a system can occupy. More microstates mean higher entropy. B. 
any irreversible process results in an overall increase in entropy. This is true. Irreversible processes generate entropy, leading to an increase in the total entropy of the system and its surroundings. See the total entropy of the universe in any spontaneous process. This statement is incomplete and therefore ambiguous. If it were intended to mean the total entropy of the universe increases in any spontaneous process, then it would be true, as spontaneous processes increase the total entropy of the universe. However, in its current form, it is not a complete statement. d. The change in entropy in a system depends on the initial and final states of the system and the path taken from one state to the order. This is false. The change in entropy of a system depends only on the initial and final states of the system and is independent of the path taken. Entropy is a state function. Given this analysis, the false statement is d. The change in entropy in a system depends on the initial and final states of the system and the path taken from one state to the order. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Philippians 4 verse 13 I hope you enjoyed and learned something new from our topic on physical science, lead reviewer. If you learned something from this video, please give this video a thumbs up. Don't forget to share this video with your friends. If you have comments, questions, or suggestions, you can leave a message in the comment section below. Thank you very much for watching my videos. Hoping that we meet again in my next video, and God bless you always. It is the Teacher Luma Ben YouTube channel.